Hey Scott, it's David. Gonna try this, make this one a little bit easier than the last time that I uploaded a video for you. So the question and answer deal, I created a custom list from SharePoint matching what you just told me. Um, what I'm gonna do is uh, we have uh, K2, Sharep SharePoint for K2 integrated into our portal. So if you don't have this, just let me know. I'm just gonna go into K2 settings, um, objects, sites, list, and libraries. And I'm going to create a smart object off that question, that custom questions list that I just created. What this is gonna do is it's gonna automatically load the connector that I need to generate all the methods into K2 for us so that I can say, give me a list of what all is in that library. I wanna create a new one. I wanna delete a new one. I wanna update one. Uh, what it sounds like for yours, it sounds like you just want to possibly create and then list. You know, you can um, list it directly in SharePoint or you can come to K2 and do it. So uh, I have the Smart Object Tester tool running and I'm just going to refresh my the portal instance that I have available here. And all those, uh, that customized list should be in there now. Oh, I'm too high. I have to come down a little bit. So I'm just going to refresh everything. And I'm going to go into my portal questions. If I right click on questions, I can execute it to test it out. I can see what methods are available. These are automatically generated by K2. Um, there's an attachment, add attachment, because there's a field in there that allows me to add attachments, but generally I wanna, I wanna create, um, the, f the folder and content types aren't what I'm shooting for. I'm just shooting for the top three. I can, through, Share, through SharePoint, define that I want these three required but I just left that initial field required, describe the weather. I should have made all three required, but didn't really need to. So from here, if I tested um, this out, is it warm out? Yes, no, I can um, automatically generate a yes in here. Um, describe it uh, warm, but cloudy. And then filled out by this, we can define this in our smart form a little bit better, but um, our domain is Denalix, and then um, the user that I generally use is the administrator account. So all this is just for testing, I'm just going to fire this to get uh, an object in here so we can come back into the, the questions and I should have one area populated. Um, I know how to pre-format this, usually the filled out by, this is this is how has to be filled out properly for it to populate this correctly. But I could show you again in the smart form um, object how it's um, formatted a little bit easier with a control. So that's how it looks if I use the tester tool and fire it in there. Um, what you're shooting for is uh, you are shooting for getting this data um, populated into like a, a, a control and then um, into the controls in your page and then uh, populating pop possibly a list down below. So I'm going to use that uh, smart object. And again, let me know if any of this is confusing. It's um, sometimes we can take things for granted, but I'm not sure like what level how far you've gone into this. So again, this is was automatically populated into my portal account. Um, I can right click on this, my smart object that was created and say, uh, design a view. And that I can design two different views off this. I can design an item view that can um, generate the items or I can generate a list view that will list the things that are populated in that SharePoint list. I'm gonna do an item view first called question test. I like to use the smart object to generate because it automatically gives me what controls I can load into it. 
and then I'm going to just do all the standard buttons just so that we can see what it the testing is like. So this is what it looks like. You can move stuff around. I like to I like to play around with this what might the uh, user might feel most comfortable with. If you wanted to um, again on this um, on that initial view, I'm going to you could pull it, you can generate like a a toolbar at the top as well if you selected that. So you know those are the two options for the end users. If I finish this off, I'd automatically have access to that SharePoint library through Smart Forms to create a new item. Um, is it warm out? This is a little bit checkbox saying checkbox is a little um, stale. You might say yes or no. Um, if it's true, it'll say it'll be yes. False is there's no filled out. The filled out by we haven't fixed that up yet, but right now I could say describe the weather weather sunny but cloudy or you know whatever this is a test I think this is the only one that's actually required so it should fire into there um, for the bottom one I can for that list view that you were talking about I can design a new view and this time make it a, into a list view and I'll create the name question list view related to what I'm trying to do what I'm tr what I'm generating for the end user again this the the dynamic create the controls is a little bit easier sometimes I'll throw the ID in because if you're an up if you're gonna update a record you need that ID so I'm just gonna hit OK on this you can move stuff around in here by dragging the, the columns around makes it a little bit easier on the end user I might just run it for you real quick so this is what is already I loaded this one on the the last run through smart forms and then this was the one that I created earlier ultimately it sounds like what you're shooting for is a combination of the both and I don't know if this concept is going to be a little bit tricky but I'm going to right click on my main level here and design a form and then I'm going to drag I'm going to say question form and then I'm going to um, drag in both of those views that I just created. So with the form you can combine um, multiple views into one. I can uh, this concept is kind of tricky because there's rules that you can apply to the form and rules that you can apply to the view. So I can um, I can f fire off one of these and I can refresh this view down below. I'm also going to show you real quick on this this test view. Um, I'm going to edit it but I'm going to say this is an important rule is that when this view when the view is initialized I want it to populate who, what users use in the form. I think that's what you're shooting for. So when the view executes the method and initializes uh, a huge one because when the form is generated by the end user the initialize always fires first it just means that the form is being rendered I'm going to uh, transfer the data of what users logged in and contextually over here um, it's a system value and K2 knows what current users logged into K2 and I'll generally populate it with an, a display name I'm going to drag this I'm going to drag the name over to filled out by but I'm going to change the type of control so we get a better uh, feel for this I'm just going to call that let's go with a I'm going to change this into a data label because we don't need to modify it and then I want to make sure that that rule still works when the view is initialized I'm going to transfer the data so the name is going to go to that data label and then I'm finish I'm gonna run so it's filled out by the cool part about this is that filled out by will be automatically populated when you hit load it'll automatically take that or I'm sorry when you hit create it's automatically gonna take that that data in um, I can also show you the role real quick on this and then I'll finish this up create you can see any rule that is behind these create any one of these buttons so in create the rule is clicked it does a create against that SharePoint list and it pulls in all these 
data fields. So let me know what you if you have any questions on this. It's a general overview of how to create a smart object behind a SharePoint list and then bring it into K2 so that you can fill it out with a form. But uh, just, again, let me know.